Hello there, and welcome to episode 10 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. In the last couple of episodes, we have set up our city, and we have now officially the worst behind us. I have access to all the intermediate resources that are troublesome. We have access to cut stone, to metal, to clothing, to textiles, everything we require. There is currently a slight shortage of workers, but that will be resolved soon. We are still suffering from the latest uh, extortion scheme, so until the treasury is refilled again, there won't be much migration happening, because you know what it is, how it is. Riches make people happy. Right now we have to mitigate a, a steady pull of workers at, I don't know which workshop, but somewhere we need workers constantly, but it's all gonna be fine. So for today's episode, we're going to focus into the upgrades of technology, so that's going to be really exciting. I'm going to upgrade the labs, and then we're going to head on over into the next tiers of service buildings. This is, uh, you will see if everything goes well during this, or during the next episode if I talk too much, that what I meant with you are you have the worst behind you because the buildings that we're going to apply next to our city will be so much more powerful compared to what we had before that our population problems will be very very soon over we're also going to go for procreation we're also going to learn how to grow our own crotonium soon but more about that once we have or next technology level applied. In the last episode, I have already unlocked this technology here, improved laboratory, so we can now upgrade our labs. This costs us a certain amount of resources, and as you see here, we have, as usual, not enough uh, furniture. It's always the same with us, not enough furniture, but uh, as soon as I have enough workers available, I'll fix that. But for now, well, I'm waiting for money to come by, because I'm going to import that necessary furniture. But there's other imports beforehand, and so on and so forth. There's always something, but at least we can say we're producing some furniture by ourselves, and there's finally positive migration again, because we're uh, out of the net negative, I guess. Let's see. Well, they're happier because of some sort of access has increased. Well, it's always a little bit hard to determine what exactly is uh, going, what is happening to make those trends happen. But uh, usually, as a rule of thumb, I only pick up people when I actually know what I need them for. So I do see a bit of a uh, problematic situation here with the janitors. They don't seem to be able to get on over here at all, so we're going to we're going to bring a extra janitor here over there. Lately, we um, or no, yeah, well, hmm. I'm hesitant because I know that I can technologically upgrade our uh, our janitors soon, which is going to fix that problem for real. Well. Right now, we are on a drain again with the money, and uh, this is it just takes it to, takes as long as it takes, but uh, we can right now, I think. So, let's import that furniture and start the technological revolution. Promise I'm not over exaggerating. There is uh, this phase of the game that we're currently seeing is probably the hardest part because uh, you can easily maneuver yourself into kind of a problematic situation and uh, if, the, if it ever happens to you that you run out of workers or anything like that and you don't know how to expand any further, just check out which kind of industry you right now need the least and then cut back on it and... Uh, work on expanding your either your science to unlock new um new services or clap out new services that aren't uh, currently fulfilled well enough that's the other option you could go for so 
for our current situation it's definitely all bound with the next canteen but well damn extortionists if it bothers you with those raids you can also tr completely turn them off while generating a game you can also disable the system of raids all together so since we have now workers again i can finally re-employ the tailors i unemployed them because i needed workers but i see that we're running out of clothing slowly but steadily so we're going to do this like that and finally the furniture is there so the upgrade happens instantaneously there's no delay in between that you just have a better a better and more powerful um, lab. So we have now alone a capacity in this thing of 7,300. That's more than all the tech that we are currently have applied. And then there's still this uh, ramshackle uh, lab, which is also providing 2,000 points. So in a nutshell, that 50 person bonus on the, uh, on, on the lab really, really does uh, way quite a lot so also our happiness is going somehow through the roof i don't know why ah yeah there's vegetable in town again that's why the veggie bonus so what i really want to research and i should have done a little bit earlier is now maintenance so with the with the new influx of technology points i want to focus first into the maintenance tech because that just makes uh, the uh, buildings deteriorate slower and therefore your genders get uh, behind their work better took me a while to figure out how, why there's so much deterioration in that city but it's because i haven't uh, researched that tech uh diligently enough so there we go so let's pick up a new influx of people there and uh bring up a couple of researchers too and uh, we're going to repeat that procedure, of course, immediately, because it's just that good. So, 144 uh, furniture necessary. I think we can import that quite easily. Yep, can. So, playing with your denarius, as you see there, gives you so much opportunity to boost your uh, progression like that. So, use that tool. It's amazing. In the meantime, we are just uh, expanding like that. We got the second veg farm slowly kicking into gear. We need more workers here, yes, but uh, it's it's gonna be getting there. It's gonna be getting there. I don't dare to pull more Protonians right now because I'm a little bit afraid that I will uh, be pissed off once the veg is uh, eaten up, and uh, I don't want to risk a riot whenever you're expanding always take a measure if the current situation is stable or if it's only because you have a certain good which will expire soon could be the case if it's the case if you pick up all those migrants they will turn against you because they were expecting the veg and if you don't have the veg they will get the veg Seriously, they, they run around and uh, destroy buildings, kill people, and uh, it's a, quite a mess. <laughs> Alright, but uh, we, we're we we're avoiding that as good as we can. If that ever happens to you, don't worry too much though. Uh, a riot will always succeed after a while. It's a bit of a horrible situation but, though, because your city is in a pretty bad shape and you have to uh, basically do exactly what I said cut back your uh, unnecessary industries, focus on what's producing happiness, because you will be left off with less citizens, so all in all, really, less is more. Go slow. Don't uh, stress yourself out. Songs of Six is a, is a game that really has no death clocks or any hidden timers or anything, no. You can just take your time and let it expand as necessary. Okay. So, with that all um, said, we're going to upgrade that thing here as well, or so I thought. Well, we're running out of wood here a little bit. Our woodcutters aren't, defi aren't effective anymore. And uh, you might already notice, but I do notice for sure, that little by little our industries aren't powerful enough anymore for our new demands. 
like um, we we needed a second vegetable farm veggie farm because of the new pool soon we'll need i think another pasture or we could use one for more meat and uh all these things you'll notice or the janitors they aren't keeping up in time because the buildings degradate too quickly that's also because we built so much with wood by the way wood degrades faster and requires more um requires more time to keep it up so the good news though we are just about ready here we go to expand now into the next age because we have now a surplus of 2100 tech points that's a lot we're uh, going to do a lot of work with that so first off we're going to go on over to the tech of tombs and discover it right away. I prefer tombs over bathhouses because tombs don't require a upkeep cost, whereas bathhouses do require you to put coal in to uh, to make make them actually work, and uh, this can be quite uh, bothersome over time. So I think we definitely need more masons. We definitely need more people. So let's, uh, let's start working here. Okay, another thing I'm noticing, the, this warehouse and uh, this place, they, the distance keeps growing. So we're, we're gonna be building a new, new warehouse quite soon-ish, but not now. Right now we have other things uh, to do, and that's uh, to prepare all the necessary materials for our new project the first crypt in town so crypts are service building just like all these service buildings we've built before but they are much more powerful but also much more costly that's one downside of them so we're going to see a seek a small little niche i think this is a good spot and uh with the with the crypts well, let's go 12 on 12 but I, I do go for a, a smaller building than usual because I do know that uh, crypts consist out of darned costly materials. As you see there, the exterior is already just 81 cut stone. So we are uh, we're out for we're out for quite a bill. And now let's add in graves as many as possible, of course. We want to make it worth. The effort and as you see there tombs require gemstones so we have the cut stone we ain't got the gemstones yet so this is where we will have to pay quite a nasty bill to begin with but uh, well this is just as it is with those advanced buildings it does take a lot of money so i think we're not going to be able to fill in these here plus side less gems so now we need to do the same things as we do always we need to bring up the respect meter to 100 percent so that's by filling endless amounts of statues in I'd, w I'd wish we'd had a little bit more item variety for the crypts in future versions. That would be really amazing. And as you see there, now we have a sick bill sitting on over here. I'm also going to suspend that job right away. Because I don't want to start that before we have the materials, you know. That's just not necessary. This also comes with the necessity of bringing a, a new import station up. Because as you might have already figured... This place will also require gemstones to be kept in shape. Costy, albeit super effective. In the previous version, scripts weren't as costy. There's a new um, steep increase in costs for many of these powerful buildings. I'm totally okay with that, though, because seriously, they are just uh, wow in, in terms of effect. You'll see once we get there. So, I allocate one chest for gemstone. And uh, we head on over to our import depot, 
and we're going to import gemstone to a total of 20 percent and then we're going to be broke for a damn long time because every freaking gemstone costs us 570 bucks so uh you can't already figure that it's going to be quite a costly thing but on the other hand it's so worth it because we're going to be we're going to see a, a boom in population out of that, which allows us to transition right into the next uh, station of the game. Most importantly, we're going to be able to finally industrialize our, our city well enough to earn some more series book. I think um, one of the best ways of industrialize our city will be more pastures, because meat has a really decent price. It really comes with a really, really good price. Livestock also is really valuable, and uh, we already have one pasture full with animals. Therefore, we can easily expand on that. And that's what I want to do there. But first off, let's complete that canteen down there. It'll help us a lot on our way to the to the crypt. So building these things is really a quite a spectacular task. You really have to stem quite some weight there it was easier in previous versions i'm super happy that it ain't anymore because honestly this gives every one of these completed milestones so much more powerful meaning and uh there's way more euphoria and, and happiness and it gives you a good feeling about it how much work we humans actually have to put into culture, you know? How darn much effort there is in culture. That's something that Songs of Six really um, manages to transport. I love that about this game, by the way. So, next thing, we're going to activate the canteen construction. So, I have, men I have mentioned it in a different episode before. This canteen has to be a little bit, uh, has to get some help. But more about that once it's been built. So, the other big surfs building that we are going to bring on up next is the bathhouse. The bathhouse and the crypt have a uh, very similarly heavy impact on your society. But until then, there's nothing going to be possible before we have imported those gemstones. The gemstones are also a, a sad necessity to hire nobles, so that's a pretty good transition into the topics of the next upcoming episodes, because of course I want to introduce nobility as well. So, there we go. Right now, well, it's one of those phases where we're sitting here and uh, hoping that everything works on out fine. As you see there, my population is on a slight decline right now. We're um, always able to check out the uh, graveyard. It's a good readout about why things are happening. By the way, mass, mass graves are not going to be used if there's proper uh, burial available. People are no savages. So, let's see. Do I have a fish export running? I don't. Outrageous. We have to change that. Because our fish production has hit limit. This is really good when that happens. This is really always something good. When you see a red meter on any of your productions... It's a, it's a reason to be happy, because that means your economy is uh, in full swing, and you can uh, earn money out of that. So people are dying a little bit here, but that's nothing to worry about. That's the cycle of life. Literally. We'll have to put up uh, homes for the elderly later, too. That's one of the things that have been added in version 62 as well. So we're exporting now fish. Let's check it out. I get, I bet fish has an extreme spoiling rate as well. So sales price is also very, very high. So we're going to export another 30% of that. We could export more, but uh, I don't I don't like to lower my stockpiles of food too much. Why so? That's pretty simple, because the more food we have, the happier the population. There is a metric inside this game that makes your people nervous if you're if the food 
stockpiles in the city are too low. <laughs> so it, it's worth having a certain stockpile for your folks. They they grow twitchy otherwise. So there we go. Canteen's going on up. And uh, our money is building up quite nicely as well. But tell you what, I'm actually willing to go down as low as 50% of my warehouse stacks. By the way, if now, after configuring this, your warehouse stacks don't go as low as 50%, that's a uh, sign that you don't have enough uh, export depots to manage the job. You would need more or larger export depots if that's the case, just so you know. It's sometimes a little bit hard to read out what's happening here and why it's happening and how it's happening. So these little things help, I hope. So that canteen now. The thing here is, let's check it out. It has that uh, blue jagged line. Where is it? Your canteen has a range. Here, that's that blue jagged line I was talking about. It's, it's spanning across the river, so it... Uh, confused me a little bit. So the excess of the canteen stops here. So our warehouse containing all the food sits here. So in a, in a nutshell, this canteen can provide services because it won't have enough food to provide the services. So there's two ways to resolve that. We're going to pro I'm going to introduce both because it's a pretty good opportunity to do so. So first off, haulers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different foods, but we're actually not providing them all. We have bread, we have fish, we have veg. Ah, well, we need a lot of haulers here. So we're going to provide a total, a grand total of five haulers, and they're sitting next to the canteen. There we go. And these guys will carry the food on over here, so the people at the canteen can pick it up to provide it there as a service. This is a uh, nifty way to solve your issues when you don't have the intention to build a warehouse next to the place where you're providing service at because it's literally not not necessary this is all all we require to do uh where's the meat at here's the meat at the downside of this method though is it binds quite a lot of uh workers as you see there we're at a ne negative of seven here that's because of the uh, all the haulers that are now employed this is a very workforce intense method of getting the job done but at the same time, it also works out quite nicely. Depends on your situation, I'd say. What we're going to do here, nevertheless, of course, we're going to build a new warehouse, like I, like you might have already uh, assumed there. So I'm going to make my life quite easy. I'm holding left control and uh, no, not left control. Sorry, uh, left shift. I always mix these up and just pick this uh, template up and duplicate another warehouse here on the very far side of the road though i want to put it away as far as possible from this place here so the uh, these buildings are as effective as possible of course so i bet the homelessness is down here well the haulers need a home so we're going to provide them a home and uh, the new canteen as you see there is providing also happiness and uh Provoking people to move on over here. Wonderful. So let's get that housing down. We can set up a couple of houses back here on the back side of the canteen. I like the idea of that. This is nice far away from the from the noise and the ruckus of the workshops. And at the same time, our people have a good way of getting to work easily. So once that warehouse is opened, I'm going to show you how to configure a warehouse to provide service for the canteen and now we're going to remove the haulers because I personally feel like we don't necessarily have that amount of uh, workforce available to, to spend there. But to be completely realistic here, in later stages of the game this is no problem. Workers will become less and less of a problem the longer you play. So we're now a mayor. We have 500 people there. Hooray! So we gained a slight bonus for happiness yet again, but that's it. 
Next big milestone, an important milestone, will be 1,000 people. That's what we're working towards to now. And uh, this is going to be quite a big achievement once we get there. And we're going to unlock a new cool feature as well. So right now somebody's starving. I don't know why, but most of the time, if they aren't locked inside a uh, inside a corner or anything, it's just people that aren't uh, getting their meal in time, and usually it just disappears. But that I can take it seriously and uh, get, find out why it's happening. So one thing that I want to introduce now before we uh, unlock new technologies is I want to unlock maintenance another level because it really pays off and uh, logistics because it really pays off to invest some uh, thing there too oh wait a sec we need to unlock the paved roads first too well can i afford it? yes so this now gives us gives our people they carry a little bit more and they carry and therefore all the processes go a little bit faster and also another level of trade negotiations because the more levels you have there the freaking more money you'll earn like it's it's really that much of an increase for example here that level changed a lot of the prices for for, for the wood from one to two that's doubling the uh, the profit if we'd exporting some that be the case but all in all every single level of that tech is giving you is yielding you such high returns it's totally worth the effort there so speaking about effort um how's that warehouse coming together slow but steady all right so another nice way of uh, getting uh, your people some help is to just issue some uh, chopping jobs and some wood uh, and some stone uh, collecting jobs in the vicinity of a uh, of a construction site because uh, as far as i've seen things they always prefer the closest source for a material and uh, that's a neat little trick that i uh, find quite useful so we're going to add now the veggie farmers because you know we need so as you see there there's not a single gemstone in our position so far that's just because it just takes that time but at, at the same moment I'm not that bothered by it because our masons are at least cutting together the stone that we require so we don't need to import that much stone at the same time but yeah the first script I'm not too surprised about the fact that we're not getting it together in this episode but it doesn't matter too much the advance of technology as you see there is opening up many many venues I'm personally opting into this uh, tree here a lot because I really like it to improve on the various areas of our city I'm also going to improve a little bit on the technologies here because you can increase all the outputs at this area too I haven't done so yet but I wanted to do so as soon as we got the upgrades so we're going to increase fishery methods that's only a 10 person bonus but uh, don't underestimate it husbandry methods because we're uh, actually living off of these industries quite a lot and of course we're going to go for edible crop optimization and uh, vegetable farm bonus or wait a sec oh we need two levels before we can go for that I'm sorry so we take that tech twice I have now spent most of my tech points I'm well aware of that I have no tech points available now for unlocking the next big uh, thing but I also know that once I have constructed that crypt we'll have all the necessary population available to increase to fill up that lab here to the brim so there's 20 there's room for 21 uh, scientists there and then we'll have all the science points we require for the next level there so there's there's a plan behind that but to uh, emphasize it here at this point once more increasing your efficiencies at this point is so worth it look for the things where you notice that your workshops are just not as effective as you want them to be there i have uh, pulled up a lot of people there population wise i saw that my food production go went on the decline here a little bit so i decided now to uh, pump up the the outputs of all my food industries 
this should get us somewhere. If this is still on a hard decline, I'm just going to build up new workshops, but you get the idea. I also noticed that I was unhappy with my maintenance, like uh, the buildings were degrading too much, so I changed that as well. And the logistics upgrade here, well, it's just a general quality of life thing that you'll never regret. And uh, I personally am quite the sucker for trade. I think this game is meant to be played hard with trade and therefore, yeah, you get the idea. Alrighty, so that's the end of this episode. I just have uh, received a big shipment of gemstones so we can go for something in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you are going to get this far and enjoy the game because this uh, we're, we're sitting now in front of the greatest part of this game when, when the when the real explosion of people will come and this transforms into a real bustling city. Alright, so leave me your comments, leave me a thumbs up if you'd be so kind, also subscribe and hit that bell thing if you want to stay updated with new things from my side. Also, if you want to check on out the entire series, there is a playlist link down there below, leading you also always to the newest episode. And there is also a couple of links support for supporting this channel. There's Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee as ways and means to support this channel. I'd be delighted if you'd give them a look. And a big, big thanks to all the supporters out there who are already doing the thing. I'm deeply appreciating and enjoy gaming. See you guys next time.